Hi guys, so a couple people have asked me how I make my spiral dread ties and I wanted to show you. What you're going to need is a felting needle, some supplies, some wire, and this is just soft jewelry wire, crafting wire, get whatever thick wire you can get, and you're going to want to cut out one really long piece and fold it in half and twist it together and I twist it by holding the two pieces like this and just keep twisting it and it makes a little spiral and if you keep twisting all the way down you'll end up with this and then I just take the ends and I fold them over so that they don't poke me or any of my friends that I send them to. Definitely don't want them snagging on your hair, that would be awful. So I, after this, I take my roving and some people use fabric, fabric's a lot easier. Uh, with the roving you have to kind of draft it out a little bit because it's a little thick and you want it to be a little thinner and fluffier so that you can manipulate it and felt it together easier. So I just wind it around a little bit and eventually it kind of catches and it just starts spinning on itself. And if you have drafted it out properly, which there are tons and tons of videos on YouTube on how to draft out wool. So I'm not going to cover that with you guys, but you can look it up on your own. Um, if you've drafted it out properly, it will lay really, really well. And you want to get it as tight as you can. So just spin it the best that you can. Wrap it around. If it breaks, that's totally fine. See? keep spinning it get to the end of these fibers lay your new ones back on there and just keep spinning it will felt together when we're through with this process see so after this you end up with something like this and this is some roving that I hand dyed, which I absolutely love how it came out. It's so gorgeous. So you want to take your felting needle and you want to go around the ends a little bit. You want to be able to encase that wire. You don't want it to pop out. And this is step one of the felting process. So after this, you do the other end. And then you want to get this whole thing wet. Just wet it right down. And I have a bucket of water right here beside the camera. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's completely saturated. And this is the absolutely worst part. It's so time consuming. So I wanna wet my space down a little bit so that it's easier to felt my wool. I want to use a little bit of soap and I like um, anything that's plant-based or organic. Just want a little soap to be able to create a little bit of slip and slide on your area. You don't need a mat. You can absolutely use just a towel. It's super, super simple. It's just really time consuming. So what you're gonna do is initially just roll this together so that it holds a little bit. And then after it holds, and you can tell um, just by feeling it that the fibers are tightening up a little. So after this initial couple rolls, you're going to want to do each section about 100 times. And this is where it gets a little bit frustrating. And sometimes it's easier to just walk away from your project and come back and finish the other half 
especially if you have to make a really long one. This one is only 16 inches long, but um, I'll do a little bit of the rolling for you guys and then I will pause the recording and I'll come back when I'm done. So this is it. This, it's just rolled over and over and over and over and that's how you felt the pieces, the fibers together. And it will be a little bit difficult to tell at first that anything big is really happening. But it's so rewarding in the end because it stays together so well. I love how these come out. I don't know if you can see sides a little bit thinner and less bulky than the side. All right, so I will be back. Okay, so I have rolled each section about a hundred times and um, after you do this, you're going to want to let it dry. I didn't make one so um, I have to use my wet one, but I take string and it's pretty much just generic um, like quilting thread or friendship string or embroidery floss. Um, whatever you want to use is great. Uh, I think you can even probably use yarn. Um, I going, I'm going to take the end and make sure that if it's floppy right here, I fold it over. And... I'm going to do that right now and wrap it just a little bit to try to keep it shut because you don't want any mishaps. And you're going to go all the way down one side. So let's do that real quick. Just really, not super tight, but really tightly. And then at the end, I'm going to see, yep, yeah, it's a little floppy there too. So I'm just going to wrap this around a few times, come up to the end, fold it over, and wrap it really, really tight. And then go back down. This is going to make a little crisscross wrap, which is, I think, a lot of fun. Um, you can do it a lot tighter and have it be a more solid looking wrap in areas, and that's a lot of fun too. But just for this demonstration, I'm just going to keep going in the crisscross wrap. And after I get up to the side, oh, there's a little knot there, but that's all right. After I get up to this side, I'm going to go really tight up in here, too. Cut the end off nice and long. And I'm going to tie a couple knots right there. Just wrap it tight. And tie another knot. And wrap it tight. And tie another knot and I'm gonna do that until there is almost no string left and this will be my last knot and then I will clip this end off and that's it that's it guys this is how I make my spiral dread ties this one is going to be available over at Reggie's Corner on Etsy and Facebook. And like I said, this one is only 16 inches. They are about $20. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Have a good day!